Our second reading skips way ahead in the story of David and Saul and Jonathan. This is from the second book of Samuel, first chapter, verses 17 through 27. This is after Saul's army and David's have been fighting, and David has just learned that both Saul and Jonathan have been killed. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and Jonathan, his son. And he said, it should be taught to the people of Judah. Behold, it is written in the book of Jashar. He said, thy glory, O Israel, is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised exult. Ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor upsurging of the deep. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you daintily in scarlet, who put ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of battle? Jonathan lies slain upon thy high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant have you been to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? May God add his understanding to this word. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this time of coming together to worship, to learn, to grow, to, to be in your presence. Lord, I ask this morning that either because of me or in spite of me, that you bring a message to your people that will bless, that will bless each one here, advance your kingdom, and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we're continuing in our look at the lineage of David. And I want to really take some time today to examine this powerful love between David and Jonathan. And I hope um, that in the midst of this, these are great, rich stories um, I hope that you're taking the time in your Bible to read beyond just the passages that we're sharing on Sunday morning so that you get the full breadth of what is taking place and what's, what's happening and what's being shared because I don't know about you, just the passages this morning, looking at them, standing by themselves, trying to find specifically what the message uh, is to be able to share uh, was a task. Um, and I wasn't quite sure. It wasn't readily apparent to me what I felt like God was saying, this is what to share. But as I prayed and looked at the rest of the story, going beyond just the passages to read into First and Second Samuel and what was going on, what stood out boldly was an incredible and inspiring love story between two friends. The friendship of Jonathan and David was centered first and foremost in their faith in God, which is abundantly evident in our scripture passages today. To understand our passage from 1 Samuel 20, we have to understand the rest of the story and more of what was going on. See, prior to this time of uh, Jonathan discovering his, the great anger that his father Saul had for David, uh, prior to this, David had already determined, he already foresaw that Saul was going to want to kill him. 
And he went and he took time and he shared this with Jonathan and Jonathan didn't believe it. He wasn't quite sure. He didn't know that it was true that that would be his father's intentions. Uh, but he nonetheless devised a plan to let David know if his father had plans to kill David, what, uh, and, would, and then he would take time to help to spare his life. They devised this whole plan. So we talked about the boy going. They have this whole thing. The boy's going to come and shoot arrows, and if the arrows go to this side, then everything's good, and if the arrows go past and you have to keep advancing, then uh, yes, it's true, my dad is angry with you and wants to kill you. It was this whole great plan. Uh, so David was waiting for Jonathan to come and to see what happened. Um, so in addition to this plan, Jonathan, when they were having this conversation ahead of time, had David take an oath to continue to show kindness to his family no matter what. A covenant was formed. They prayed to God. They sought for God's will in the midst of all this because their friendship was built upon uh, that incredible faith. And even in the midst of this trial and struggle uh, between the two families, between Saul and between David, uh, this friendship was bridging the gap between those two things. So as we enter our first passage for today, we find Saul following exactly the path that David had predicted and expressing his desire to have David killed in order to secure the ability for Jonathan to one day be king rather than David. After, after, this, John, after this, Jonathan keeps his oath and he does warn David so that David can flee and be safe from, fall, from Saul's wrath. He goes against his dad. The friendship is so strong that he actually goes against his father's wishes and makes it a point because of his friendship for David to make sure that David would be safe. As we fast forward to our second passage, we find that Jonathan and Saul in this time, and this is a big fast forward, there's so much more in the story and we're going to be getting into that even more over the course of this month. But we find that Jonathan and Saul had both died in battle because, uh, against the Philistines. And like I said, I'm not going to spoil how all that came to be uh, because I do want you to dig in. I do want you to pull out your Bible. I do want you to read through and see what took place and um, <clears throat> be prepared and be in the story so that you can engage with it as we continue in that conversation. But look at what we find in this story in 2 Samuel. We find David lamenting for the loss of Saul and his sons, and, uh, loss of Saul and his sons, including Jonathan. David does not disparage the memory of Saul or speak ill of him or his family. He mourns and laments their loss. This is in keeping with that oath that he made with Jonathan. Um, that, that he would continue to look favorably upon the family of Saul. He also does not immediately herald in his own succession as king. Instead, he helps to lead Israel in a time of mourning, mourning the death of Saul and his sons <clears throat> and the change of what was taking place at that time. If we look carefully if we look carefully in both of these passages, we see a story that I believe is an example and a sign of hope for all of us. To begin, let me share two passages that really stood out for me as I was reading this week. The one is 1 Samuel 20, verse 17, and it, it comes before our passage from today, but it's that covenant, that oath that was being made between Jonathan and David. And it says, and Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath of love for him because he loved him as he loved himself. He loved him as he loved himself. Have we heard that before? Have we heard that concept before? I think so. We'll talk more about it in a moment. And the other verse was 2 Samuel 1 verse 26. 
And this is David's love for Jonathan. And this is during the lament. And he says, I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of women. He's showing his incredible love that they had a bond and a closeness that was unmatched, was unparalleled, that was making it so that the two of, the, two of them had a love for one another um, that went beyond. It was uh, loving for the sake of. This love that they had for one another was beyond just friendship as it was rooted first and foremost in their faith in God. It gave Jonathan the courage to stand against his father's wishes and to protect David. And it gave David the grace to not try to kill Saul and also to remember him fondly and lament his loss. The love and friendship they had was a true example and embodiment of what Deuteronomy teaches and Jesus commands us, that we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Even though they were from two different political sides, they had one love, one faith, one friendship that was stronger than their differences. We all need to learn from this, don't we? What if our faith was stronger than our worries? What if our love for others was stronger than our differences with one another? What if we allowed our friendships to unite us beyond our differences? I think we are all looking for a love that will radically transform the division that we see in our communities, in our churches, and in our country. What made the radical difference for Jonathan and David was the love that God filled them both with. There's a love that we have. There's a love that we share. There's a love that we claim that can truly radically transform the relationships that we have. It can transform the differences that sometimes we share. It can transform how we respond to one another in the things that we are facing so that at the end of the day, love prevails. Today, we have the opportunity to come together for World Communion Sunday. As we share in communion today, we come into the presence of the God who expresses and shares that radical love with us always, but especially in the breaking of bread and in the sharing of the cup. Today, we join together with Christians around the world in remembering and celebrating the radical love of our God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we, the church universal, hear me on that? As we, the Church Universal, we're coming together with people around the world that are celebrating communion today. We're sharing here in this space, but we're joined together in spirit with people all over that are coming together to break bread and to share a cup. As we, the Church Universal, all of us together, partake of the body and blood of Jesus this morning, I pray that we also take on the love of God for our neighbor that will lead to the transformation, salvation, and healing of the world. Because when we try and do it ourselves, we have a tendency to mess it up. But when we get out of God's way and allow God's love to work in and through us, maybe, just maybe, love will stand above the difference. Love will stand above the tension. Love will stand above everything else so that even the differences don't keep us from finding love for one another. Amen? Amen. So our discipleship commitment uh, for this week. What neighbors are God, are God calling you to be more loving toward this week? Who is someone that you can share even more love with uh, as you go into this week? What wounds can be healed and what darkness can be dispelled by your love being shared? Sharing love instead of other things. Go and be loving as God has loved you. 
Take time over the course of this week to see where your love can make a difference in the lives of others, but also in your life. Imagine if we filled our thoughts more with the love that God has than the differences that we sometimes share. So do that this week and see how God blesses you in the midst of that.